midday Wednesday, <laughs> midday midweek yes. podcast. I'll leave this right it's here. time to go. We're back. Wait, hold on. I would say we're back and we're better than ever, but I am <laughs> not better feeling than ever. allergic to the season. Wait, we gotta do our sound check. We're back. <laughs> the sound check. It has, has been, been completed. Okay, so this is what we're doing. We're calling this season two because I don't know how seasons work with podcasts, but we've taken a very long hiatus. So it was just our break in between seasons. So season two, episode one. Welcome back, season two. Back with a vengeance. We have a new studio. <laughs> <laughs> we've moved upstairs. We're going to new levels. <laughs> We're on level two now. Upstairs. Wait, no more no more devils. Level three will be the attic. You'll see then. <laughs> next tune in for next season. We'll just be in the dark. Um mm. no, so we we have it's just been a really crazy year. Yeah. In some of the best ways and in some really just hard ways. And we've um we've launched a church and we have made lots of mistakes and <laughs> we've done some great things and it's just been such a crazy learning yeah. time for us. Um, and so we're just excited for what the Lord's been teaching us that we get to bring into season two mm. of the Freedom House podcast. They say you can't get wisdom unless you go through trials. That's right. And by they, I mean James from the Bible. That is right. Yeah. And we've been through some trials. Absolutely. And we've been through some testing. Mm-hmm. And I think we're kind of still in a little bit of testing and that's okay because what the Lord is showing us in this season has just brought tremendous growth mm -hmm. um, and opportunity to see like what the Lord really wants to do. Yeah. <clears throat> so today we're going to talk about how to deal with disappointment, especially in the midst of the testing and the trial season that the Lord brings us through and the refining and all that fun stuff mm. because yeah. we've learned a lot about yeah. disappointment and we've also learned, and we'll talk about this, that we deal with disappointment <laughs> very differently. Like, I, mean, I don't think there is anything else that we're so opposite in. That's probably true. We're normally on the very same page. Yes. Except for in dealing with bad news, and disappointments. Yeah. Um, actually, not not all the other things. Even like conflict and stuff. I think we're always on the same page. Yeah. No. No. We we have we are very similar in a lot of ways, and we're we balance each other out in a lot of ways. But when we get handed a grenade, D looks at it and starts freaking out, and crying. That's it's about to explode. And I'm like, I'm going to figure out how to make this grenade not go off. Wrong! You, Miles has the grenade in his hand. He says, praise God for the grenade. That's, <laughs> that's the truth. Okay? You don't come up with solutions. You just say, God's going to do something with this bomb yeah, that's you're about probably right. to go off. I'm more like, that's God gave husband. us this grenade. <laughs> so if it explodes in our faces. How does God want us to steward this grenade? That's my husband. Me, I'm first like... And then I freak out. I take a minute to just be still. And then I have my, and then my personality kicks in. And I freak out a little bit. Mm. But thank God we have each other. That's right, baby. So how, where do you want to start? I was supposed to come up with questions and I didn't. So I'm sorry for disappointed. We all, I want to <laughs> we'll start with, with, um, with preparation. <laughs> and lack of preparation will always keep you in the place that God is trying this to move you from. This keeps it natural, Miles. This keeps it natural. That's right. Do we want to talk about disappointments that we've specifically walked through or do we just want to talk about how we've handled them? Maybe just um, how we've handled them. Probably just how we've handled yeah, them. Yeah, I think like we could talk a little bit about like how people handle um, whether it's disappointments or even just like testing from the Lord. Yeah. And I think sometimes they're one and the same. Um, and I think people have gotten away from accepting the fact that God does test people. Yes. Um, and it's not the testing like, I'm going to give you this test that I know you're going to fail. Um, but it's really more of like, hey, um, what happens when I come over to you and I just try to break off one of these dead branches from you? How are you going to respond? Mm -hmm. Are you going to be mad at me for breaking off a dead branch? It's not producing fruit. And the other branches that I want to produce fruit aren't going to produce fruit either because you have these dead branches taking up some right. of the water that I've been giving you. Um, but almost like 
it is like a, a test of how are you going to respond? Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I think we have to break away from the fear of being tested. Like God, yes, the Lord is yes. going to test. We say we want to come out like pure as gold, but oftentimes we forget that we have to go through the refining, the yes, testing yeah. to make sure, are you actually the gold that I created you to be? Right. Or are you just going to be still like with all of the dirt within mm-hmm. you rather than being the pure thing that I want you to become? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Well, and I spoke on, um, Saturday at Freedom House about something and I want to share it here too, because the Lord really showed me, um, why he tests us. So I think a lot of times <clears throat> when we go through the testing season or the refining process and everyone, you know, encourages you like, it's just, you're being refined and you're like, praise God. But sometimes it's hard to find the why mm. or to understand, or at least acknowledge it to have a better grasp of, okay, there's, there's a purpose in this. Like, I'm not just getting tested just because God's bored. Like there's something on the other side of this. The first one is to get you ready for what you're about to receive. Mm. And I think so often the Lord has something for us, whether it is, a, 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 a calling, a mantle, a position that he has for us that if we're not ready for it, mm. we can't take it and we can't handle it. And so what does the Lord do? He tests to see if we're ready. We get tested all throughout our life from school to driver's license to anything about, you know, being able to maintain and, and be capable to do something that... Yeah you might not be able to do before you're ready. Hmm. And so um, one of the verses that comes to mind with this is Jeremiah 17, 10. I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. Yep. That's a good one. What are the first three words of that scripture? I, the Lord. I, the Lord. I think about that because it's not... It's not um, I, the rabbi, you Hmm. know, the great teacher, or even I, the Hmm. counselor... But I, the Lord, like as the Lord, I'm going to search the heart and test the mind Mm -hmm. um, to to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. But I think it's this understanding of who he is. Like you're kind of talking about how the Lord's not going to give you something you're not ready for. And I think about that um, for ourselves, like in the role that we play in the kingdom. I think a lot of times we like to consider ourselves these like, big bad warriors, you know, like, oh yeah, I'm going to take ground and I've got the full armor of God on. And, Mm -hmm. and we get excited about being the warrior. And I think like the Lord in different seasons, though, will test different things. He's not going to send you into a place, um, to fight a battle that you're not going to win because God is undefeated. Always has been, always will be. Mm -hmm. I love when our friend Herson says that he's like, Hey, the freedom house undefeated. God always shows up. And that's how that's God's that's God's MO in the entire Bible mm-hmm. is he always, he always shows wins. up. <laughs> he always wins. He never stops his promise. Mm-hmm. I thought about this, that, that God's promise is not like coming to pass is not contingent upon your obedience. I think we think it is. Yes. You getting right to enjoy the promise is contingent upon your obedience. It just goes to show that like, if God says, I'm going to win this battle, that means regardless of what you do, the battle is going to be won. It's already won in the eyes of the Lord. Yes. But if you want to enjoy <laughs> the battle, the, the, well, <laughs> the, not just the battle, but the victory and the mm-hmm. plunder of the if battle, you what be you're going to win used in the battle yeah. to go through the victory. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's where obedience yes. sets in. Yeah. Oh, that's so, good, babe. I know. I thought the same thing. The Lord spoke to me like yesterday or two days ago, and I was like, wow, like, wait, hold on a second. Mm-hmm. I thought everything was contingent upon my obedience. And the Lord's like, well, right, right, right. <laughs> do you want to roll in, in my promise? Because if you do, then yes, it is depend, uh, contingent upon your, oh. your obedience. <clears throat> but I'm wow. still going to have my way. That's like yeah. thinking that our obedience is going to cause Jesus to come back for us. And it's like, no, he's going to come back for us. Yeah. It's just whenever the time is right. Right. Now, if he's coming back for you, <laughs> wow. that's contingent yeah. upon your obedience to the Lord. That's a whole other story. If you want to stay with him, you've got to abide in him and, and obey his commands. Like that's part of life, part of being in the kingdom. Mm. But mm. anyways, I think it's a matter of are you going to be a warrior in the next season? Mm. And I think that's contingent upon are you going to be a son and a daughter in this season? Yeah. And just like he's saying, I, the Lord, will search and test the heart. 
Yes. And I think it just, uh, his, what he calls himself is also like opens our eyes to see what we should call ourselves too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, so good. So good. All right. Number two, why is he testing us to show him that you will be obedient? Sometimes the Lord brings you through a testing season simply for the fact to know, are you going to be obedient to the things that I'm calling you to do? Can I trust you? Can I trust you with, I have something for you down the road. It might not be right on the other side of the testing season, but it's making this heavenly deposit of trust that the Lord has in us. And, and it reminds me of this story that our friends, um, Bernie, Bernie Moore told us, cause he used to walk with Reinhard Bonnke for a long time. Who's an incredible, he was an incredible evangelist. Millions came to know Jesus because of him. The Lord told him, go to Orlando, find a building. You're going to have your, that's where your headquarters is going to be for your ministry. Hmm. It was a Friday. He goes to Orlando. It's like the worst time to look for real estate his over wife the weekend. Was home, don't go. Yeah, you don't need to go right like, now. What are you doing? He goes, nothing comes up. Nothing's available. He comes home on Monday and his wife says, did you find anything? And he says, no, I didn't. And she says, well, why did you go on a Friday? Like, why not just leave on a Monday and then you have the whole week to search and it just makes more sense. And he said, because now the Lord knows if he tells me to go, I'm going to go. And there's not going to be any hesitation in it. Mm -hmm. And they had a building within the month. (laughs) So the Lord took care of that. Yeah. Came available. Yeah. So it's, it's just seeing that the immediate obedience I think is a big part of this too yeah. and not this back and forth and needing 8,000 confirmations, but just, and yeah, I believe in confirmations and the Lord does that, but just responding to the call and being obedient because we have to show him that we love him. And if you love yeah. him, you'll obey him. Yeah. I think the trust part goes two ways too, because we, we could hear it as like, you know, God wants to know, can he trust us? You know, and I get it. Like I'm going to give one talent first. And if I can trust you with that one, I'm going to give you two and Mm -hmm. same thing with two and four and five and 10, all that. Um, you know, if I could trust you with little and you're faithful and little, you'll be faithful with much. But I think exactly at the same time, God is saying, can I trust you? Um, he's also asking, do you trust me? Yeah. Like, because if you trust him, you'll be obedient to him. Like, Hey, if I tell you to go across that river and fight some battles and you're going to win all of them and you're going to claim all of the land that's going to be yours. Do you trust me? And the first time God tested them with that, they failed. Mm -hmm. At least 10 out of the 12 spies failed. Mm -hmm. But do you trust the Lord when he speaks and tells you he's going to do something? And I think the season that we've come to is we believe the Lord spoke something to us. We didn't see it come to pass. It looks like it failed. It Mm -hmm. looks like it became impossible for it to ever come to pass, how do you deal in the beginning of that season of the disappointment or the, wait, did the Lord speak it to me? Or did I miss the Lord? Um, or is he testing me with this response? You know, all of these different things. I think that's when it starts to become confusing because you either do one of two things, you either doubt yourself that you heard from the Lord yes, Mm -hmm. or you can doubt God right? that he is not um, doing what he said he was going to do. Um, But I think... Do you do either of that in in the midst of disappointment? I feel like you don't. I think sometimes I can go to that place where I just go to to be alone with the Lord and ask him questions like, did you say that to me? Mm -hmm. Did you tell me to go there? Did Mm -hmm. you tell me to do this? and, And I'll like have this conversation with the Lord where I'm like, I believe that you did. I believe that you did. Right. But you know, I'm realizing that a lot of times the Lord spoke to me that like my life and the way that I do ministry and the way that he's called me to do ministry and and us in the Freedom House and part of the reason we're called the Freedom House would parallel with Moses and the way that he led people. And I'm constantly finding that Moses is reminding God of his promise to his people. God's like, these people, they're not getting it. I'm just going to just wipe them off the face of the earth. Moses. Me. Yeah. Sometimes we want to react like that, right? When I'd people like, are doing okay, wrong. All right. They're done. Life. Swallow them up. They're annoying me. That well, would be me. Well, he did that a couple of times. He swallows people up in the earth. But anyways, but he says that he's like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm just going to get rid of all of them. And Moses, I'm going to start a new nation. I'm going to make you a great nation. 
Moses could have just been like, man, you know what? All right, let's change the promise. But Moses is like, hold on, God. Your promise was for was for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and their children. And Jacob's children were the 12 tribes. It wasn't just for me. I'm only representing, actually, Moses was a Levite. that He was not actually even considered one of the 12 tribes of Israel, which is interesting, whole other story. But he's like, hey, it's not for me, God, alone. Remember, you said it's for all of your children. And I, I have them all here behind me. They're being a bunch of jokers, but like it's for them. And God's like, okay, you know what? We'll do it a different way. I'll remember my promise for my children. I used to hate that song. It was it was that one song. I think it was like Matt Redman or something like that old school song. Remember your children. Remember your promise. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. something like that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, why are we telling God to remember His promise? And then you start reading the Bible, and it's like over and over and over oh, it's again. Scriptural, yeah. Yeah. And God, he, he listens to the Israelites when they're in slavery for four hundred years, and he hears them crying, and it says that he remembered his promise for his children. He waited Mm -hmm. for the cry of his children. So I think that's where we process differently Mm -hmm. is that D will go to the place of like, my great, great, great grandfather, Abraham told, told us that God spoke to him, that we're going to have this beautiful land that here we are and we're slaves and cry out to the Lord, just cry to the Lord. And the Lord's like, mm, I can hear the cries of my children. I'm going to remember their promise. I'm going to remember the promise that I had for them mm-hmm. and what I spoke to them. Yeah. I think just very real life too is that, yes, I, I'm, I'm a big believer in letting yourself process and letting yourself feel emotions and letting yourself kind of go through the, the motions of that while remembering that the Lord is with you. Um, but then there's that part of me that other than just crying out really goes to that place of self doubt of like, did I, did I hear you correctly or did I hear something correctly and I was obedient and did it, but the outcome was not what I expected. So maybe, maybe there is nothing wrong in the leading up to what we did and stepping out or doing things that the Lord instructed us to do. But we conjured up our own thought and our own idea of what the outcome was going to be and what it was going to look like and the timing even of it. And I remember we started saying certain dates, some certain things were going to happen by certain dates mm-hmm. and whether or not that was speaking in faith or just, again, us kind of putting it in our own scope when those dates didn't match up or when things didn't turn out the way that we wanted, it's like wait a second. And, and of course we go to this place of, did I hear you Lord? Yeah. And I do believe the answer is yes. Especially when you know that you've heard from the Lord, especially when there's so many confirmations, but having the trust and the understanding of that, it just may not look how the Lord yeah. is having it look. And it may not turn out the way that the Lord wants it to turn out yet or ever, or it might be better. It might, it's just, that's where I'm, I have a hard time of kind of grasping because I just know his, his thoughts are so much bigger and higher and greater that I can't even really comprehend them. So I get very human and I'm like, but, but this would be the best case yeah. scenario. This is what would work. This is what would make sense in the natural. This is what would make sense financially. This is what would make sense for my heart. And then when none of those things line up to be able to say like, okay, I trust you, Lord, and you trust me because I was obedient, even though at the end of it, we didn't see what we wanted to see, Um, but that we're still allowing the Lord to to work in us and produce our character, which is the next one, and grow us and strengthen us. And in something that I truly thought for a moment was going to like break me, um, a couple things this year, honestly that it just made me want to retreat um, has just strengthened me so absolutely. much. And I'm not, absolutely. I wouldn't think like that normally. Mm-hmm. Like you would think that certain things would just make me want to like go into a little cave forever. <laughs> Are you okay? I'm okay. I'm dripping Are over here. Crying? I'm not crying. I'm Did just... I touch your heart? Maybe I'll, this is D and I are changing our uh, our coping mechanisms now. On, I've, got, I've gotten really strong. And you've gotten very emotional, huh? <laughs> yeah, but you know what's funny though? I kind of want to touch on this because I don't want to forget about this. Is that what we have to understand as we walk through trials and testing and disappointment and things not looking the way that we expect them to look? 
not only do you have to deal with it yourself when you are in a marriage or when you are in a ministry with other people, you've got to also have grace and understanding for how they deal with it or how they cope with it or how they process it. And so for us, (laughs) a couple weeks ago, I was just so confused by Miles because I felt like he was in denial or robotic or whatever, whatever, not coming to terms with things because he just automatically goes to this place of, no, I have faith. Like God's going to show up and God's going to do something and I don't understand it right now. And he's like super mature and spiritual and (laughs) and perfect. (laughs) No, but he just, that's always his response. One time he got in a car accident Hey. jumped out of his car and said, I think something good's going to come from no. this. I got out and for some reason I said, <laughs> I think the Lord is going to bless me. <laughs> I, I fell asleep at the wheel. Thank God you're okay. I, I had a long day of work. <laughs> I fell asleep at the wheel. And this is going to preach to you right now. And I get out of the car after I, after I run in the back of another car. <laughs> and I don't know why. I just felt the Lord. And I was like, he's going to bless me. So here I am. Um, this car that I was a Mazda six, it, it was good enough for the time being, whatever we had just become, or we're just about to become youth pastors at this point. Like oh, yeah. it just happened. Right. It was like, yeah, right around there. And I get out of the car and I, I say that to myself and I'm talking to the Lord about it. And next thing you know, fast forward a f- <laughs> few days and insurance company calls, they write me a check. They totaled the vehicle and I'm, you know, everybody's like, Oh, I totaled my car. I didn't care because it was actually far more than what I think I owed on the car and even what the car was even worth. It was like, I don't know how this happened. The Lord blessed me, right? Don't get at in an accident same, to bless No, yourself. don't do that. At the same time, <clears throat> Dee's dad calls me and it says, hey, I was meaning to get rid of this Forerunner. Do you want it? Which was an SUV. Do you want it? And I'll give it to you for like a thousand bucks. And I'm like, what? <laughs> it so wasn't now, like a 2020. And, it was like and a, we had been dreaming... Subscribe. We had been dreaming about building this front porch, this deck on our house because it overlooked the lake. And we're like, how beautiful would this be if we had a deck? That whole situation turned into I got an SUV, which I needed for youth ministry. Very true. Because I could not fit all of the equipment in my little Mazda 6. Very true. We were able to buy cash, um, well, not only the car for a 1000 bucks, but also build the deck and have some extra. It was like a win-win-win situation all across the board. And, you know, I think that's a perfect scenario to teach. Like, like I almost hear the Lord saying, don't you remember when I did it for Mm -hmm, you then? mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We forget. Like, we try to remind God of his promises, but he's like, how long are you going to not know me? How long are you going to forget? He he questions the Israelites at one point. He says, how long are my children going to despise me? Which really means like hate me, like not know me. Like, how can they be so distant from me? Did they not see the 10 plagues that I did to break them free from yeah. slavery when they cried out to me, like how much more will I do for them when they're in freedom, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that is something we can hang on to as mm-hmm. children. Like, do we recognize that we're co-heirs with Christ, literally making the son of God, our brother, not only is he our bridegroom and our savior, the Messiah, our teacher, everything, the son of God, but he's also our brother and <laughs> in Christ. Mm-hmm that we now get to become co-heirs with him. Like if we hang on to that promise, then all of the other things that we thought were promised to us or all the things that we hoped for, they pale in comparison to that one promise that everything that's his, he says, is also going to be yours. He says, I share my glory with no one, meaning no other God's going to share glory with me, but you fast forward to being co-heirs. And he says, you not only are going to share in my glory, but you'll also share in suffering yeah. to become like Jesus. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. to recognize sometimes that the trials we're going through is a moment for us to share in the sufferings that Christ suffered with and ours, again, pale in comparison to what he yeah. suffered with. Yeah. But goodness gracious, like how many times did Jesus get let down by the very ones he came to save? You know, his own people not only rejected him and shamed him, but also publicly crucified him naked on a cross. Like, Mm -hmm. and he came back conquering death and they still missed him. Mm -hmm. 
anyways. I just think that there needs to be a memory. Like we, I, I said this to our church two weeks ago. Like I think we fail like in our memory. Like yeah. we are forgetful people. Yeah, for sure. And I think that is something we need to repent from and ask the Lord to help us with because in the current season of letdowns and disappointments, we've forgotten the last season that we were going through that and God came through for us. Mm -hmm. The victory of past seasons is often forgotten in the current struggle of the present season. It's just the truth. Yeah, I could see that. How do you, though, like, because I I agree with everything you're saying, and I eventually get to that point. I'm not immediate like you where I, I go through all the emotional roller coaster of everything, and then I go back and I seek the Lord and I get there. And for me, the hardest, the hardest part, I think, of what we've just recently walked through um, is just feeling like, yes, you're there, and I'm so thankful that you were. Because I need, if we both were in a pity party, I think it just could have been really bad mm. and chaotic. But having an understanding of how to not invalidate, you know, someone else's feelings that isn't there. And, and I've seen this with people where a tragedy happens or grief happens and someone's going through something. And I think sometimes as believers, we do want to be so quick to be like, no, but like, God is good and he is and you're going to get through this and you are and all of that without like, but we don't always have to jump there. So it's, I'm almost asking how do we find this like happy balance of allowing ourselves to process, yeah. but still remaining really faithful Yeah. because if we just jump right to like, no, God is good and I just trust him and everything's going to be fine. It's like, if now for someone like you, I know you just really believe in that and you walk that and you don't have these doubts and these second guesses. Sometimes you do, but you get out of it really quickly. Whereas with other people, allowing them to feel and process, um, and, uh, and kind of naturally get to that place. Yeah. I mean, we have, you and I have like trained ourselves on how to process when there are question marks. Mm hmm. And I think disappointments are often the first question that you want to ask the Lord is why, 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 mm -hmm. even if you're good and even if you're here in this with me and you're near to the broken yes. hearted, yeah. why, why, I mean, are you kidding me? <laughs> Any story I read in the Bible, I question that, but mm -hmm. not like a God, why would you do it that way? But it's like, I actually just want to know why, Yeah. why is it that he chose to do it this way? So the thing for us is that when we when we first moved here, we had already seen the Lord's hand in like a few, a lot of areas. Yeah. So we had this like sense of holy confidence, like just in the Lord, like <laughs> he's always going to make a way. I heard somebody say yesterday, um, I think it was Maya, right? Mm -hmm. This girl is super prophetic. We love her. And she said, she said, Jesus is the one who walks through closed doors. Yeah. I'm like... <laughs> I know that's scriptural, but why have I never thought about that that tagline of my life? Are you kidding me? <laughs> He's the very one who walks through the closed doors. Um, so anyways, we came here and we had this confidence in what the Lord had already done. So anytime we had a question mark or what seemed to be a hallway full of closed doors, mm -hmm. instead of saying, why, Lord, are all the doors closed? We would almost ask the Lord, which one of these are you about to open? Mm. That's what it felt like. We would mm -hmm. go out and we would pray almost every single night. And mm -hmm. we would just ask, the, we would say to each other, what's the Lord going to do? There was such an expectancy on our life. And that's come back. Yeah, We went this last season of feeling just disappointment after disappointment. We started to struggle with the whole question of like, oh, why are all the doors being closed? Mm -hmm. And we're coming back. And I believe that there just had to be this recognition of who God is in the season when everything yeah. doesn't look good. Yeah. And that is where the Lord's going to test you. He can't test you when you have everything going great for you because no trials, I know, but it's no so perseverance. Much nicer. <laughs> sure, but okay. you don't grow, draw closer to Him. I know. Are you kidding me? I know. I know. Well, it, you know, it's, it's a different, it's a different closeness. Last year, I drew closer to him in, in almost this like, like, oh, thanks, dad. Like just everything was just, it felt like we were just the spoiled kids mm -hmm. and there was favor. And I definitely drew closer to him. It wasn't this like, 
trial refining. I have to, I have to seek the Lord because I have nothing else. It was like, I just love my father and my father loves mm. me. And it was really beautiful. And I drew really close to him in that sense. This year I've drawn closer to him as, you know, my, my Lord and my savior and just entrusting my life to him. Um, and what's great is I have the, the, and my life, but especially from last year, it's almost like I have that collateral with him to where it's like, I know you love me. I know I'm your, one of your favorite kids, you know, whatever. So there's a reason that we're going through this year, but my closeness has just been like a different drawing in Mm -hmm. depending on like the circumstances. Yeah. But here's where it comes in that we are forgetful believers. What about the season before the last season? Mm, it was bad. <laughs> so it's easy to go back to the last good season and be like, why Why is it not like that one? But that season was one of the best, if not the best seasons of our lives. Mm-hmm. Of our lives. Yeah. And Dee's had a lot more life than I have to live. She's a, a lot little older. bit more life. But whatever. It's literally one of the best seasons of our lives. But the season before that, one of the most difficult. Wasn't the worst season. It wasn't the the most, it was pretty painful. It wasn't the worst season of our lives though. It was just the most difficult season of our lives. And that was when we had to determine who God was going to be for us. Mm -hmm. Are we going to walk in faith? Mm -hmm. And we could go back to that season and say, what was the Lord testing in us there? Mm. And because we saw the fruit of this last season, Hmm. I believe that we proved, proved? Proven? Proved. Proved. We proved um, within us what God was trying to grow in us. And here we are again. And just like you said in the very beginning of this, like, what does he have on the other side of this thing that he's Mm -hmm. waiting to give Mm -hmm. us, but it is taking this season to get there. Everybody wants to take ground and get the promise, but they forget. Mm -hmm. They forget that there was a battle. Right. Like, literally, 12 tribes of, of Israel... They say there's 13 battles, but two of them were against the same people because they were just disobedience involved in there. But really 12 major battles in the promised land. Mm-hmm. One battle for every tribe. <laughs> I don't know. God is is so about numbers. He's so intentional. He said that his that. children tested him 10 times in the midst of um, in the midst of the wilderness. Well, he tested Egypt with 10 plagues. He gave 10 commandments to test their obedience. Like everything was about that. Um, I, I think there's just something there. Um, and what the Lord is about to give on the other side, but what is he? That's the question we've been asking our church. Mm. What is he testing within us now? Yeah. And there's a reason for that testing. Mm -hmm. It's Mm -hmm. not just for him to be like, ha, told you. Something that, um, has really helped me in this season was I was speaking to my friend, um, Elise and she is a pastor's wife in Australia and she's wonderful. And she has a really great pastor in her life and his name's Pastor Don And, um, she was saying that he was just kind of helping her through some stuff. And he said, we grow and we prune and we grow and we prune and we grow and we prune. And it kind of makes me think about what you were just talking about, how 2020 was like pruning, 2021 was growing, 2022 is pruning. Mm. And I'm like, this is just forever, huh? Like this is just what life, and it might not always be yearly, but this is how life, when you are walking in his will and when he's wanting to grow you and when he's wanting to use you and wanting to keep you alive and thriving in what he's called you to do, yeah, you're always going to go through a pruning yeah. season. Yeah. And it's a it's a positive thing. Like, we don't love walking through it. But hmm. if we don't, if the pruning stops, the growing stops. And as much as I don't want to say it out loud, I don't want to stop growing, obviously. No. So I don't want to stop getting no. pruned because then I'm going to let all these dead things come in and, and disrupt what the Lord's trying to do. Yeah. I think about what the Lord is coming back for one day. Hmm. He's not coming back for this beat up looking bride. That's hmm. like struggling to yeah. get by and doesn't look anything like the bride that he died for. Right. He's coming back for a spotless bride, you know? And, if we long to be what he's coming back for, then we should long to go through the testing and the pruning. Mm. I, I, I mean, I think I tell people this all the time. Like when I die, there's only one thing that I would care about being said about me at my, my gravesite or at, at my funeral. And that's 
man, he was so much like Jesus. Hmm. Like, even for people that didn't really, really know Jesus well, they could say something like that, you know. That's my heart for all of the believers, though, is that when we get there, we look just like Jesus. Like, and the Lord showed me this vision of being in his throne room, and I was nervous about meeting the Father, and Jesus just, like, kind of, like, put his hand behind me and, like, moved over and, and kind of passed me along to go to the Father. And when God looked at me, it was like, it was like he saw his son. It was like he saw Jesus. Mm -hmm. And because I was clothed in his righteousness, like it was almost like I lived a perfect life. Like I had not messed up not one time, even though I knew I did. And I was nervous about him seeing all, you know, me for who I am and my mistakes and my failures. It was like he saw me for what he died for us Mm -hmm. to become. Mm -hmm. Um, His children without blemish, like perfect, free um, in love with him. Mm-hmm. And I think that in order for us to truly be in love with the Lord, we have to go through some of the testing things. And I believe that when he brings you through a season, if you can call it a wilderness, then you can call it that where he'll test us to see, am I truly enough? Mm. When I, when I don't give you the promised land that I have promised you and it's coming, I've told you it and I've brought you out of slavery to get you there, but not yet. What happens when I'm all that you have? Mm. And I, I think that is like, that is one of the most important tests is when I take everything away from you, am I all that you need? Hmm. Am I all that you have? And really, yeah, <laughs> he's all you have. That's why we often run to him so much faster when he takes away everything. But what happens when he gives you everything? Yeah. yeah. Am I still going to be all that you need Ooh, when I'm not word. all you have? Mm-hmm. And those are the two seasons when it's a good season like Dee was talking about or a tough season. In those two seasons, oftentimes it's when he takes everything away. He's the, right. he's the God who gives and takes away, Job said. Mm-hmm. I think that we get tested in both seasons to see, is he still truly all that you need? Mm-hmm. And that's a test I never want to fail. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Me either. Anything else you want to add? Yeah, I'm just going to add this. I hope this encourages someone. Um, and I was driving in the car. I was going to go to um, this thing that, that William Hinn was putting on. He asked me to come and, and just be there. He really felt like I needed to come and receive, and I, I believe it too. And on the way there, I just found myself in uh, Psalm 42. Um, yeah, I was reading the Bible and driving. I know it's worse than probably texting and driving, but the <laughs> Lord, and Jesus, you know, took the wheel for me. Mm-hmm. But in Psalm 42... Um, it, it talks about why, why our souls are cast down. Like, why are you cast down, mm-hmm. oh my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. And I just started like shouting it, declaring it, mm-hmm. repeating it over and over and over again to the point where my conversation was not just a prayer between me and the Lord, but also like me calling my soul out. Like, why are you downcast? Oh, my soul. And why are you in turmoil within me? And I'm telling my soul, my flesh, I, I'm like stepping into the spirit within me to talk to my flesh, to yeah. tell me how I needed to respond yeah. because we were in like this weird, just weariness. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what's interesting enough is that that's what William was preaching on that night when I got there was, was, uh, was Leah and how she was the weary one in, in this uh, relationship with Jacob and all this stuff. But it was how to recognize that you are in weariness, but you need to break free from it. Yeah. And I just want to encourage somebody, um, oftentimes in my greatest struggles, anxiety, depression, my most difficult seasons of life, it was when I started declaring scripture over my life, mm-hmm. not just asking the Lord to help me, but going and reading the scriptures and reminding God of his promises for me. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget when I was struggling with anxiety, I got to Romans 8, I am more than a conqueror through Christ who loves yeah. me. I shouted and declared that over and over and over again, and I felt anxiety literally, physically, tangibly break off of my life in a moment because I got to declare the scriptures. Same thing happened with me in my car the other night. I started declaring this and I felt like I walked out of darkness into light. Mm 
Yeah. I felt like I, I walked from a season of just feeling like, oh, Lord, like, where are you? I know that you're here, but, man, I just don't understand this, to, God, you are here with me. Yeah. And I just declared this word over me. I'm going to hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. Yeah. Declare the scriptures over your life. Yeah. Every battle Jesus faced in the wilderness, he declared He's scriptures. The yeah. That's, the Lord has had me in... Um, Psalms 46, verse 10, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our mm. fortress. And just allowing him, like be, be still, just rest, just let go, just trust, just leave things and know that he is God, that he is going to get the glory from this. And most importantly, that he is with you. That he's not, when we go through a trial, it doesn't mean God disappears and watches how we how we respond without mm. him. He's there the whole time. He's watching the whole time. He's, he's beside us the whole time. It might feel like we're alone, but he never leaves us alone. He never yeah. leaves us or forsakes us. And so we, we get this thought in our mind, like, why have you left me? And why am I going through this? And why am I isolated? And it's like, are you? Or is that just what, hmm. how you're viewing it rather than viewing that you're in a testing yeah. process and he's, he is watching to see how are you going to respond? And, and so you're never alone and he is still with you. Yeah. And most importantly, more than anything, he, he will, and he always gets the victory and he's going to get the victory in the test yeah. that you're going through right now. And you stay faithful and you stay obedient and you remember that. His ways are greater and better yeah. and higher. And it might not make sense to you right now. It will one day. Yeah. And even if that's not for a long time, it doesn't matter. Like we still entrust that God is good and God is faithful. Yeah. And that he has you in this season. So however you handle disappointment and disappointing seasons, whether you operate more like what Dee was saying, how she, how, where she goes to or, or me or whatever it is, never stop running into the arms of Jesus. Yeah. I just want to just share that. Like, I, I feel like I have to say that, like you're going to feel alone because you make yourself alone. Right. Don't. Right. You need to get yourself into the arms of Jesus and you need to get yourself surrounded by a few people who can comfort you mm -hmm. and console you, but also direct you back to Jesus over and over and over again. You don't need people in your life that just agree with your pains, but can comfort you through them mm -hmm. and encourage you to draw closer to him and not miss him in that season. Don't run from him, run to him. Mm -hmm. It is a possibility to run away from the Lord, even though you wouldn't think it, but run to him and don't doubt that he's there with you. The Lord is near to the mm -hmm. brokenhearted. He mm -hmm. saves the crushed in the spirit. So, I just want to encourage you to, to make sure that you don't run away from the Lord. You run to him. Yeah. Amen. 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 Amen.